Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office. Ooh, we've got to zoom out today because we've got a big box here. With a bit of luck, today we'll be constructing some of the very latest in booby board technology. And that is, of course, the booby cortex. Dun, dun, dun. Mm. It's in me box here. Let's get rid of the, the big old box. So that's quite good, though, isn't it, for holding all your workings while you're working on a project. So there's our little pile of boards. Look at that. How cute. How very cute, Miss Poppins. Um, to be a bit careful, because there is a solder stencil in the uh, the kit there. Let's be a little bit, just the tiniest bit careful, not too careful. Just an appropriate amount of care needed. So that's the solder paste uh, stencil if you if you're into that sort of thing i generally don't use them but i do have a collection of these but the boards themselves that's what we're really interested in i'm curious at how many i actually got in the end because they've got this process where effectively i ordered one but because a sheet of material is a certain size that'll give you yield you up to x amount and i think they promised me at least 10 so if I didn't get 10, these were exceedingly expensive because it's a very expensive prototyping company for PCBs, but I wanted them done good and I wanted them done quick. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I got one more than I expected. Look at that. And I did do a shout out on Twitter, by the way, for anybody who's interested in being a beta tester for a booby cortex oh there's so many of them um, but i'm going to go through now the process of actually commissioning a pcb so that could be interesting for some of you so if you've got a design um, and you've made it you've had it manufactured you don't just want to solder everything on and plug it in and watch it blow up there's definitely method to a madness that should be followed and i will be showing you my method and we can work out whether or not i'm mad or not from that so uh, let's meet back here in a moment after I've managed to gather my materials. OK, welcome back. I've got my little tablet set up over there and that's running TeamViewer connected to my main PC so I can actually hopefully see what, uh, what the drawing is. I'm going to need that for reference as I go along. But the first thing's first and that's to prepare your prototype box and this is something I've always done. If you look around the back office you'll see a big piles of these boxes, uh, some of them probably due to be deprecated to be honest, where um, when you get the parts in, your PCBs, everything, you, you load up a prototype box. Uh, and that's because you have this huge box of parts from DigiKey or Mouser or wherever you've ordered it, of all the bits required to complete this project. And I include also things like programmers. So that's my ST microelectronics link to do the programming. I think it's probably a, a clone actually, <laughs> but uh, that's fine. I don't mind who made it. I just want it to work. And uh, I'll show you how uh, I go about this process and always make sure you're really double check. So you'll get stuff like this wrapping material, but keep an eye on it. You just sometimes there's something hidden among that bundle. So don't bin it till you're absolutely sure you've got your full fill of materials. So. At the moment, that pile is looking like my bill of materials. I'm just having another quick check through the box. The box is pretty empty. So I'm going to go through these one at a time. And uh, yeah, we might speed some of this up, but I'll just show you the basic process. So I get my uh, super duper marker pen and uh, I'll draw in the lid lines like so, representing all the compartments and this is how they look when they're open so this compartment is that one so i'm going to say here pcbs programmer that's the first two items and then what i do i'll have a look at the box and you know if you got, got them from a reasonable manufacturer so like here you can see this is digikey it does tell you exactly what it is and even the part numbers so you won't really, if you've already ordered this yourself, you probably won't need that information for reordering, but you, it's useful just sort of for identification. So I'm going to put here, I'm going to fill it up, this one here, uh, term blocks, like so. And uh, yeah, I know some of you are going, yeah, this is pretty obvious stuff, but let's just have a little play just in case 
there is a, a less obvious use case going forward. Where's me knife? Should get a better knife. It's pretty tedious, but it'll uh, it'll make everything else go a bit smoother. And what I did when I ordered this originally, I ordered um, when I placed the order for the components, I ordered the exact amounts. And then I uh, multiplied everything up to whatever was the nearest um, price break amount. So when you order one off something, so if you order, this is a jumper, a two pin jumper, and I'll write that up, two pin jumper. They might be something like 20 cents each or something if you're buying them in a small quantity. But then if you say buy an order of 10 or 100 or 1000, they go down to pennies. So there's a point where the break uh, the price break will equal the, uh, the amount you were going to pay anyway for a few, so you might as well just upgrade. So this is three pin header. And I had to buy three pin headers actually because I couldn't get them in a bigger row at the time, which is a bit weird, a bit annoying. So that's the basic stuff. Now it looks like we're on to some of the more interesting items. So. I might start these at a different end because these are like the passive. So that one, this is the 4.7, I'll write that down, 4.7 microfarad ceramic cap. Now don't bother, <laughs> whatever you do, don't bother uh, taking these out of their little uh, strip. So that's the strip that they come on and you can see they're absolutely tiny so you'll lose those so just put them in diagonally like that and that's it onwards and upwards i'm just gonna have a quick look to see if there's anything sexy ah yeah here we go this sounds an awful lot like our main processors yes indeed so they're in a mm, they've come with their own uh, silica gel pack. I think these bad boys deserve their own little slop here in the front. What's that thing? Look, it's got a humidity thing. Bake part 60% is not blue. No, no, no. Oh, so this is cool. So if you're using a, a reflow oven, and I'm not going to be using a reflow oven today, however, I will be showing you that in a future video. That's to tell you how long you need to heat them up to dry them out. So let's put this then, STM32FO4MCU. Nice. So I'm just going to rattle through these and we'll meet back here when I'm done. So that's my box of tricks all uh, built up basically, you can see there. Um, got everything marked now in the lid, more or less. And there seems to be about the right number of components here, I haven't checked. Exactly. So that's quite neat, you see. You can just throw that in there, throw that on a shelf, and that's your whole project. You know when your project's uh, done, or if you need, if you, you, like here where I've ordered spare parts, that's your spare parts to support this board going forward. So um, I'm going to start, that's fine. So I'm going to move this box out of the way and just going to make a little bit uh, of a clearance here. So I've got the box nicely perched there, just next to the workbench and I can see the parts list sit standing up next to me. I'll just have a show you with this though. This is a huge thing of solder paste. I'm probably not going to use that today, but it's the biggest, most heaviest pile of solder paste I've ever bought. But I am a bit curious, that's why I want to have a quick check of it, how difficult it is to sort of extrude. Um, using reasonable... Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I find that these things seem to be operated by machine or expect to be operated by some sort of hydraulic force, so I'm not sure I'm going to use that. But I'm definitely going to use this. We'll have a play with this because, yes, Mr. Mark Wallace, this is your um, whatever this gadget's called. I do still have it. And I'm going to use it to sort of hold the uh, PCB just because. I can see it's designed for it. I've never used it. I've always done stuff by hand, but I'm like, okay, let's give this a go. If a tool exists for something, then it must be useful, right? That's going to be my theory on this one. Just going to... I'm not sure how you're supposed to put the PCB in, actually. It doesn't look to me like it can even grip the PCB. Hmm. A working platform. 
maybe it's just supposed to go like that. Okay, I suppose that's possibly useful. Um, okay, so we've got it clamped into our working platform, and I'm going to have to zoom right in. Look, there we go. The Bubai Cortex. So having a look on the uh, diagram to my left, and you might hear the odd little click because I've got a mouse. I'm just having a quick look-see. Uh, what I think would be the most effective use of our time today or rather the best way of actually starting to test this is probably to put down the power circuitry so I'm going to start I think with the voltage regulation and uh, the voltage regulation components and that's the little dude down there so I'm just going to look in my box of tricks and that happens to be one of these necessary and if you're going to do this yourself make sure you've got your little tweezers because I suspect now once I pop this out it's going to look a lot smaller outside of the container there we go in fact you can't see it because I've got to just zoom look there you go here he is hiding cheeky boy so I'm just going to flip that over now you've got lots of ways of of getting these components down you can use solder paste normal solder um, we could reflow it you can do all sorts of tricks in fact, looking at it, look how close that is to that main uh, CPU there. I might actually have wanted to actually put that CPU in first, but no, I'm probably not going to bother. I'm just going to turn this, though, around. I think that's going to be a nicer angle for me. He said very bleary-eyed um, because I want to solder that by hand. And uh, let's just jump straight in and have a go, I think. I, I, certainly, I certainly think it might be a little bit easier with solder paste, but let's just go with it let's go with the flow I did see a trick the other day about drilling a hole in the tip of your soldering iron so that you can make a tiny little uh, solder reservoir I might try that in fact I think I know what I'm gonna do here well I'm gonna suggest I'm gonna just put one dab here there we go so I've just tinned that one pad and I think that'll just act as a really nice tack I think that's central enough for our purposes. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. I don't think I can even zoom any more. Look how tiny it is. I'm gonna have to start uh, sorting myself out with a back office microscope. Oh, there's a hair, there's a hair on that. Oh, let's turn this around. Yeah, I kind of like this platform thing because it does seem to be um, a little bit easier to sort of work on things just because you can turn the whole thing around. So that's the first component on that wasn't too bad was it look at him sitting right there so that's sort of um, joined by a bunch of uh, passives but uh, can't be bothered with that right now hang on a cotton pick a minute there's supposed to be a diode where's our diode dynamic I think I forgot to order a diode hmm bum okay let's just solder bridge that one no problemo let's forget the diode for now what we should be doing though is testing the um, the power so I think just looking at the circuit diagram again to get power from the USB port which is here we'll need that diode in so if we get the USB port connected here and that diode we should be able to plug it in and then measure 3v3 off that bad boy so let's just do a USB port Might try the same old trick. Let's rotate this thing around again. Get our first pin all tanged up. Going to be tricky to solder those two though. <laughs> See those two pins in there? Luckily, I don't think we actually have to. Oh, this is a tricky boy. The pins are actually underneath the USB port that's that is a tricky one and look at that I've got a capacitor footprint right here I could I could have done that a little bit better as well um, however I think that capacitor might be a ground so that doesn't matter so much if it touches phew wee this goes to show you though how uh, tricky some of these are this is definitely more suited to the uh, solder paste and hot air technique but 
Get in there. I'll get in there if I can. No, that's not having it. Not having it at all. So we have got an option here. Just take the component back out. See if you know it's just not working. It's just not working with that guy. The trick for him is going to be to tin all of the pads. Get them nicely tinned actually. Here we go. Because the only way, you haven't got an option of really applying solder to this once it's in, so the only way you're going to get it is to sort of hold it where it's supposed to go, line all the pins up. In fact, I probably not, shouldn't have put those uh, ground pins. They're going to be kind of more of a hindrance at the moment, but that's fine. Work around those. And get that soldered down. That's where it wants to be. So that's the USB in where it wants to be. So now I just have to get some heat. If I can just touch its pins. Yes. Good. I think that's pretty good. I'll try to hold that up so you can have a little look-see. Yeah. It's good. It's real good. So just one more thing to do, which is where that diode is supposed to be. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I just don't have one of those. So I'm going to just jump at that. That diode is to prevent if you powered up a booby cortex from an external power source on one of these these pins here to stop any uh, juice getting into the USB basically. So I'm not going to do that right now, um, but I'll have to make sure when I get these boards made for production that that part of the bill of materials is definitely there. Because although I'm not going to make that mistake, if uh, one of you folks at home buys that you have the opportunity to blow out your USB port technically by, you know, if you hook it up somehow wrong or wangle like 12 volts up it, your computer's not going to enjoy that. So that's our solder jumper right there. Bit of wire. Stay down. There we go. That should do nicely. So I've got a power lead here. Let me just uh, unfurl it. Look, I've got a nice big pink, big pink furled fat power lead. Absolutely humongous lead. There we go. We'll just plug that in so we can see if our board is all hooked up correctly. God, that was crazy. Spent ages looking for that bloody uh, voltmeter. <laughs> Still. Right, let's go for it, shall we? Don't, let's not let the smoke out. Okay. That's all hooked up. We're on volts. And if I recall, this is grand, so this should be in on this regulator. Hmm, I don't think the regulator's activating, but there is one more component that will just make this totally complete, and that's the addition of a 100 picofarad cap there. So I'm like, well, let's just add that. I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but by Jove, we're going to add it anyway. And uh, the reason it's also good to add, because it's one of these capacitors that's just a bit like dust. Do you like some dust? And that would be quite quite intriguing I'm sure for you boys and girls at home to see how to put down one of these bloody bits that's a bit like dust Calf. so the first challenge get it out of the packet without losing it and that's because it's kind of on the end it's like on a busted end there we go come on come on little fella one of the machines get this out ah it is out maybe it's already lost where did that bugger go? Okay. Next, that's why you buy plenty of them. Come on. There we go. Got one. Can you see that on the on the camera there? Is it big enough for you? Just for scale? Yeah. Dust. 
definitely dust. So the trick for this guy, I think the only sensible way, of course, is to try to, <laughs> try to use my multimeter as some solder there, is to just sort of plop him straight on. It's on and in to a blob of solder, but being very cautious. Ah, there we go. It's not one you want to get wrong, really, is it? And uh, I've already kind of. It's, it's all skew if. It's all skew if, boy. But I'm going to show you a little trick. If you get things skew if, later when you get a hot air blower even though they're misaligned you can normally bring them back by just heating the whole lock just like you know or you could probably pop this in a reflow oven and then once it flows all of those components just tend to line up how they should There we go. So now he's lined up. So I'm not too bothered. If you can get, get them all placed more or less by hand, we'll figure out. You know, pretty. You can make it pretty later. So let's try again. Let's hope we can get some bloody power. Once we get power on this regulator and we can see it's going to the right place, the right parts of the chip, then uh, we've got a chance. So you've got your 5 volts coming in, as expected, and then over here, duke, your 3v3 more or less more or less so that's good that means we can uh, really move on to the next stage we've just got to decide if we've got the power going technically we could just plop our uh, cpu right in it doesn't need any other components it doesn't need any of these little caps and whatnot um they're kind of just for fun um so i think we'll we'll have a go at putting one of those because i think that's going to be an interesting one to lay down these are kind of expensive. These are getting to the point where you want to be a little bit careful with these components. And I can see here, I actually only ordered uh, 10, um, which is kind of not even enough to do all the boards I've actually got right now on hand. So definitely don't want to waste them. Before I put that down there, there is something I can do. I'm just going to check in the CAD drawing next to me and it is next to me. I'm just looking at the pinouts real quick. I'm going to see where's the power pin, the 3v3 line for this chip. So there seems to be a couple of lines here where the 3v3 comes in. So it doesn't hurt just to buzz those out real quick. Just make sure there is only 3v3 on them. So we've got the meter there. So simple one, just pop ground on there and I think it's maybe the third pin up let's check 3v3 no it's this end one should be 3v3 and it is and this first one should be 3v3 and it is say 3v3 3.26 near enough absolutely near enough for me so this is a whole other kettle of fish laying down one of these guys it's more or less the same process but your scope for screwing up is a bit higher because you've got four angles four axes of screw up to deal with so you just want to make sure it's pretty center so I'm, I'm just doing it by eye and I have to say my eyes are really tired today I don't know what's going on with me getting old clearly getting old and uh, still not quite right probably close enough so we're going to do that same trick really of just soldering one of the legs in and then if we need to we've still got the opportunity to move it around a touch. So that's where I've got it right now. It's kind of is it on that leg? It is on that leg, it's just pivoting, so I think that's pretty good. I'm kind of be happy with that if I could get it to stay there. That's looking good actually. I think that's where we want it. So the next stage is to find some flux. And I do normally keep some around here in the back office in a little tube of gel flux. 
And if you don't have flux at home, definitely go buy some because even, even I'm putting in the effort to try to find find my tube of it because it's such a critical component. Well, I can't see my open tube, but not to worry. I do seem to have one final, final tube of it. Comes in these sorts of little syringes. Note to self, order more. And then what you do is pretty much just put a tiniest amount. Ah. The first squeeze is the hardest. Ah, oh, I did it a bit too abusively there, knocked our chip off off kilter. Don't worry about that though. Get that back in. Again, just gonna hold that down. Let's add a bit more solder. Kind of really out of kilter now. Yeah, not quite where I want it, is it? Bit of messing, bit of messing around. Mother told me there would be days like this. <laughs> what I'm going to do is just hit that with a hot air, I think, just to get it to flow. It's just not plain ball. Let that cool down. So what I'm going to do, I think that's that's sort of showing you how to put on a couple of those main ones. I'm just going to go and dot back the other bits on there so we can actually get to the point where we can test it in the computer to see if the chip will talk nicely. Okay, that took a few minutes. Let's uh, see where we're at. We got the LEDs in. Had to turn them around. Managed to get one in the wrong way around. Ugh, bit of flux. Fluxy, fluxy. And we're just going to hit everything now with a bit of heat just to get that to smooth out. Once that's smoothed out with hot air, I'm going to just put in a couple of the manual big chunky connectors and then get it over to the PC and see if there's any way we can talk to it. Hot air time. Just solder on those bits now manually. Probably a bit hot. Woohoo! Definitely hot. So the last remaining things are a couple of pin headers, a couple of jumpers, and when we'll be away. So these bits, hopefully, a lot simpler than most. Pretty sweet. I'm not going to complain about that. That was certainly a lot easier than uh, getting those other bits and bobs on. Just a couple of pin headers. We don't really need these pin headers. These are more production y type things. Sorry, I say production, more debugging than test than production things, but it's always nice to put them on doesn't hurt anybody at all. Not unless they stand on it like an errant Lego. Just check they're all sitting nicely. Yeah, they're pretty good. I'm not going to complain about that. Let's just whack them on. Get in there. Have another look. So all that remains now really 
is before I sort of plug it into any PC and start messing around there, I'm probably going to give it a little, little clean. All I use today to give that a little bit clean. Mm. Mm. Ah, I've got just the thing. I think we're going to give it a flux clean with a bit of flux clean. There you go. So it's specially made to sort of basically dissolve that uh, flux on the board. But whatever you do, when you use it, make sure you wipe it off. Otherwise, you're just sort of melting the flux. So it's a solvent that will melt the flux. But if you don't get the flux off the board, it'll just well dry back on once the solvent evaporates. God, what's happening with this can? Look, it's going mental. It's putting flux cleaner everywhere. Mmm, smells of lemons. That means it's definitely doing some good because it smells some lemons. There. Dry my hands. Dry the board. So there you go. There's a booby board and his little cousin, the booby cortex. Teeny bit smaller. Lovely jubby. Not quite as blue because, of course, the prototype boards come out green. Right, I'm going to have a go at uh, installing some PC software and seeing if it's going to play ball. Whoa! Jump in the gun there, Sparky. No programmer. Someone forgot to make a programmer. So yes, I've got to make a programmer clip and I didn't design one yet in CAD, so I'm going to make one by hand. So that's why I've got this bit of Veraboard. It's not too bad, it's only four pins. And I'm not going to use my nice black pins because they are specifically for that purpose, but I do have these blue pin headers and I'm going to need four of them. Ugh. Okay, got eight. Wanted four, got eight. That's not a problem. Now, the thing with these four is that they're not quite... Actually, four is a good number. I, I did kind of need four, and you'll see why. Um, I'm going to need one on the 3v3, the ground, and then two of the other programming pins. I'm going to need four sets just like that. So I'm going to see how they need to align. So we need two like that and we need to make sure of course when we program that we don't put them on the input voltage rail so that's fine two like that will be absolutely fine for us just got to turn the PCB the right way around and then we're going to need another two on these two pins so I hope my PCB is long enough and it is it is indeed so I'm going to put it this way Get in there, get in there. Good job. Get the soldering iron ready. Get it wild. Should be, shouldn't be, should be uh, trying to do this a little bit uh, more classy. Keep it classy. That's fine. Let's <laughs> just squidge these down by hand show you what I'm up to show you what I'm up to so this is basically going to be the uh, programming clip oh that was hot so the idea being because these I don't really need a permanent programming header on these and maybe if you're at home hobbying you would like one but you can always kind of add it yourself some more here and all will be clear one hopes God, this is a hot way of doing it not in a good hot way in a hot hot way yeah one more now a lot of people keep saying Andrew you should invest in blue tack yeah I do have some I'm not completely devoid of blue tack it's just I'm a little bit lazy I guess I just just can't wait just gotta get on with it and I don't feel I need the crutch of blue tack despite the truth being that I probably do but that's fine there you look that's as good as you're gonna get on Veraboard he said lyingly 
I did find something actually an interesting tool today um, where did I put it I found it and I lost it again but I actually found my legit here it is look my legit Veraboard cutting tool so they do exist told you so right that's good so that's there so the idea being is we've got some programming pins and if you plug in the booby board like so just double checking those yep then you should be able to get a programmer on the end and I'm gonna to have to do a bit of research and digging but that's basically it so you've got the four wires here and they're all gonna to hook to various things here in a kind of semi permanent way using these connectors I think these might be DuPont connectors I oh, they've got a name like that and then that should be it that should be able to program it and again in my haste look how handy the, the programmer itself has its own pin out so all we got to do is just hook it up so let's see we've got four wires here the black one does seem to be a bit loose which is kind of annoying but fine black I think is ground so I'm gonna put that on here and then we've got 3v3 so I'm going to put white as 3v3 because we know that's the power supply we want and then I'm going to put purple as SWDIO and then I'm going to put the remaining grey on SW clock 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 so that's those four so then likewise we're going to do the same on the other end so we've got black is ground which is this pin here and then grey is our well white is our 3v3 and then we use this other booby board that we happen to have here just to see what's the pin out um, it's that way so DIO is first and then the clock so DIO so then we have to have purple on this pin and then grey on the other so now that is how our programmer should be connected great success I programmed it up using the ST link um, software just a basic USB driver to serial port and there you have it USB device com 27 now your device is ready. All I need now is to learn how to bloody program the ARM chip on here. It's just going to be General C, but not a tool chain I'm usually accustomed to because I'm usually a microchip kind of guy working with booby boards. But now we have booby cortex, we need to learn ARM programming, and that's what I'm going to do. Please comment down below, subscribe, share, and click the little bell if you want notifications. Please feel free to hit me on Patreon, and if you're interested in testing one of these beta boards out for me and making it do some wonderful things, please get in touch. As ever, thanks for watching. <laughs>